Have you ever heard someone say that it's in their DNA to be a certain way? We tend to think of our genes as the constant in all of our wildly different cells, the one thing that determines who we are. But what if you could have more than one set of DNA? What if there were other people's cells in your body, imposters that weren't genetically yours? Hi, I'm Rachel. Let's talk about chimerism. The word chimerism comes from the Greek mythical monster, the chimera, which was part lion, part dragon, and part goat. Like its namesake, chimerism involves multiple organisms together in one body or tissue. It is the biological condition of having more than one set of DNA within a single organism. Now, this is different from mosaicism, where an organism has multiple sets of DNA because of a mutation in the original cell. In chimerism, the sets of DNA originate from genetically distinct beings. Chimerism can happen artificially with things like transplants and grafts, or naturally in one of two ways that we know of. The first is extremely rare, and happens when someone is pregnant with twins or triplets, and one of the zygotes, or fertilized eggs, dies early in pregnancy. The other zygote can absorb cells or tissues from the one that didn't survive, and develop with entire sections of their bodies belonging to another person. The second way chimerism can occur naturally is much smaller, but likely far more common. In what's called microchimerism, rather than whole tissues, individual cells are exchanged between pregnant organisms and their babies. The result is that both parties can have cells from completely different people in their bodies even years and years after the pregnancy occurred. Scientists aren't yet sure how common microchimerism is, but one study looking at brain tissue of female cadavers who had at one point been pregnant with boys found that 64% of them had cells with XY chromosomes in them. Since XY chromosomes can only exist in biological males, these cells could have come from their sons. This is absolutely crazy to me because it means that another person's cells could have been actively affecting these women's thoughts and actions. So clearly chimerism isn't just a random freak of nature. Since there's evidence that it may happen pretty frequently in humans, some scientists have suggested that it could have an impact on the incidence of diseases such as autoimmune diseases like scleroderma. The body normally has such a strong immune response to foreign human cells, so what could the medical effect of microchimerism be? It's worth asking all these questions about how chimerism relates to disease, but it also makes you wonder, if the cells in your body can be genetically distinct, then what makes you, you? The thing that I love about chimerism is that it challenges our notions of who and what we are, adding to that ever-increasing complexity of life. So the next time someone says that it's in their DNA to be a certain way, you'll know it's a little bit more complicated than that.